Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, hi, I am Bella. Great to have you here. And if you've been here before, welcome back. And before we get started with this video, make sure to press the subscribe button down below so you never miss anything that I post. And it really, really helps me a lot. So I really appreciate that. Today's video is going to be a question and answer video. I have never done a question and answer video before on my channel, so I am super excited. On one of my last videos, I had asked you guys to leave questions in the comments down below. I have compiled all of the questions right over here on my computer, so if you see me looking over here, that is why. I'm super excited to get started with this, so let's just get right into the video. Okay, so one of the questions that I had received is, have you ever thought of having short nails? So right now my nails look disgusting, so please don't look too close and do not pause the video and look at them. <laughs> I always have super long nails and I love them so much and no, I really, really hate having short nails. I miss my long nails. I cannot wait to have my long nails back. There is a pandemic going on, so all the nail salons are closed, so I've had to resort to taking off all my nails. That really sucks for me. So no, I have never thought of having short nails. Someone had asked, what role would trans women serve in a primitive hunting and gathering like society like back in the day like our ancestors my response to that is i don't know we are not in a state of the world where we're hunting and gathering so i i don't really know how i'm supposed to answer that that doesn't really apply to modern day so why is that relevant how tall am i i am 5'10 but a lot of people say that i'm 5'11 but i'm like definitely definitely 5'10 for sure not a centimeter over 5'10 absolutely not I refuse to believe it <laughs> it's unreal what are my opinions on the high amount of trans women in sex work I just think that there's a lot of reasons that trans women get into sex work I would love to make a dedicated video towards that I think that there's so much that I could say on that topic that can't be put in this video. So if you are interested in that, let me know in the comments down below and I would love to make a video dedicated to that. What are your thoughts on an age gap relationship? Truly, I think if you're happy, that's all that matters. If you're treated well, you're genuinely happy and you feel fulfilled by that relationship, then that's all that matters. And that's it on that people will always judge no matter what if it's interracial if it's an age gap if it's a gay couple if it's a lesbian couple if it's you know no matter what it is if one partner has a lot of money and one partner doesn't have a lot of money like people will always find a reason to judge so you just really have to find your happiness and really ride that what is the best way to talk to women on grinder truly just have a conversation like don't be creepy just be normal just have a conversation and just like don't be weird and don't make things super sexual and just like talk to them but beware because what i had said in my other video a lot of trans women on grinder are looking for one thing and one thing only so you need to take that into consideration when you're going on that platform to meet women i don't know what you want to meet women for on there but take that into consideration just like have a conversation like you would with anyone else like there's not a secret handbook to talking to trans women do i have a favorite car or truck brand no, but all three of my cars have been Ford. So like maybe I'm a little bit partial on that. Like I like Fords. I like what my Ford does for me. I have only ever had cars before. So I don't know about trucks, but I guess I would, I would have to say Ford because that's all that I've ever had. And do I like boats and planes? And do I fly? No, I don't know how to fly a plane. I would literally kill everybody on the plane and myself. So I don't think that that would be a good idea. And I've never driven a boat, but I, I like boating. It's fun. It's a good time depending on who you're with and the type of boat and, and where you are and all that type of stuff. Am I a city or a country girl? I would say that I'm definitely a mix of both. If you guys saw my last video, I like kayaking. I like being outside. I just like to to be outside and just like have a good time and i did kind of grow up back home in new york in more of like a country setting kind of it was suburbs i had a lot of friends in the country we used to go out in fields and have barn parties and all sorts of stuff which was really really fun but like right now i live in tampa and like i love the city and i love what the city has to offer and just the diversity and stuff so i would say i'm like a good mix of both have I ever thought of designing clothing or designing houses? 
So actually, fun fact, when I was young, I used to want to be an interior designer and I still love interior design and I think it's super, super fun. I think it's super creative and you just can really alter a space and give such a completely different vibe. But I never actually pursued that. So I had thought about it, but truly I would love to do a clothing brand one day. I think I know exactly what people need. I get the vibe. I know the style. And I just feel like every time you go shopping, you see something and you like it, but you just wish it was like slightly different and no one ever just like hits it perfectly. Yes, I would love to design a clothing brand one day. Maybe that'll be something that I can do. I don't know. Someone had asked, what was the hardest part of my transition? I would say the hardest part of my transition was the beginning. And the reason I'm saying that is because the hardest part is getting yourself to like accept yourself and getting yourself to a point where you know what you want and you're gonna like take what you want. No one is gonna tell you to transition. No one is gonna push you to transition. Like it's an internal decision and you really have to make that decision and then tell everyone in your life and, and you have to be open about it. And I would say that's the hardest part for my personal transition. Other than that, in my transition, I've been very blessed to have like a good supportive family and friends and just a good support system around me at all times. Did I overcome anything in my transition or was it super easy for me? I mean, I don't think anyone's transition is super easy. Some people's transitions vary. Some people get kicked out. Some people lose their family. Some people lose their friends. Some people lose their jobs. So many different things. But truly, I think everyone has different struggles and I definitely had to overcome stuff. I mean, I transitioned as a senior in high school. So you have all the normal high school stuff on top of being trans. I think there was a lot of small struggles that I had to overcome and in the moment they seemed really big, but that's for everybody. I guess I'm making it seem like it was easy for me, but emotionally, I don't think transitioning is easy for anybody, no matter what life you come from. So the next question is, how do you like Florida? I love Florida. It's insane to me that I live here. It's insane that I made this move in three weeks. It's insane that I live with my best friend and I live in such a beautiful place. I love Florida. I'm really happy here. And there's just so much to do, so much to experience, so many new people to meet. And I would just say overall, I'm a lot happier here. I definitely don't regret it. And I definitely don't have any plans to move anytime soon at all. Like I, I want to go home and visit, but I couldn't imagine moving back home. So I had a couple questions about men and my dating life. So let's just get into those. One of the questions is, have you ever been in a long-term relationship? I mean, <laughs> I guess it depends on what people's version of long-term is. I would say since I am 21 and I made a video about dating when you're trans and things like that and how the dating game just changes so drastically and you have a lot to learn and a lot to experience. Um, I definitely have dated some people I would say long term, like though my longest relationship has been about has been about a year, but to me, I don't necessarily consider that long term. In the span of my life, twenty one years on this earth, a whole year of that is is pretty significant. But when you think about my whole transition from seventeen to twenty one, a year of that is a good chunk of time. So to me, that seems long term. But I'm very aware that that is not long term. Someone else had written, what is my ideal dream guy? So, <laughs> I don't, I mean, I would say that my ideal dream guy is someone that is super accepting, super open-minded, confident, and just loving, and is super supportive. And it's just like consistent and reliable. I know that that's like a lot of a lot of things, but I think that that's all things that I would look for. Appearances, I, I wouldn't say that I necessarily have a type. Like some people really like tall, dark, and handsome. Some people really like muscle guys. Some people really like more dad bods. Some people like artsy guys. Some people like country guys, like whatever your type is. I don't think that I necessarily have a type. I think that throughout my dating life, I've experienced a lot of different like types. That isn't as important to me as who that person is, like their core, like what are their beliefs? What are their values? I think that is really what makes a dream guy. 
to me. So I had also gotten a question, what do you look for in a partner? I guess that is what I look for in a partner. And I'm really lucky because I am currently seeing someone with all of those values and all of those beliefs. And I feel very lucky to experience that. And yeah, I think that sometimes it's really hard to find what your ideal dream guy is or what you look for in a partner. And I think sometimes when people have such a strict view of what they think that they want or what they know that they want, it can really limit. I think that that's why I never really put a physical like view on my ideal dream guy. I mean, obviously there has to be a physical attraction there, but I think that physical appearance can really become attractive as you get to know someone inside. But, you know, obviously no one wants to lay next to somebody that's like, that they think is gross. You know what I mean? But I mean, you know, now I'm just ranting, but that's what I believe. I What's the worst thing a guy can do that would turn me off? I would say the biggest turnoff for me or like the biggest red flag for me is somebody that can't like listen. Someone that always thinks that they're right. Someone that won't take into consideration like what you feel, what you think, your opinion on something someone that really thinks it's their way or the highway that is not a relationship that is not a team a team it's about compromise it's about working together it's about trusting each other all of those things so i think that would be the biggest turnoff for me is when someone just can't listen and can't take your feelings into consideration and cannot compromise that's like the worst and i think that ends up turning into someone can be pretty controlling and can also just, it really can't go much further if you can't meet on that middle ground for sure. That's my opinion. That's like what my biggest turnoff is. Okay guys, so that was the end of the video. There was a couple questions. This video probably shouldn't be too long. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. It's really interesting seeing the questions that you guys came up with because I don't know. I, I think that it's really interesting and some of these were really good. I would say some of my favorite ones are about like the designing clothing or houses and and did I overcome anything in my transition and what was the hardest part of my transition and, and those types of questions and what's my favorite car and truck brand. Like I think that those are really interesting. Random, but I think that's why I really like them. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it. It was really fun for me. I think it was time for me to do a q and I think once I hit certain marks with subscribers and stuff, I should do Q&As to, you know, welcome in the newer people and, and do things like that so anyone can ask me questions. I love you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos and supporting me. It means the absolute world to me. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you liked my video as well, make sure to press the subscribe button. And always, as always, leave me comments down below. I love talking to you guys. I love chatting with you guys. It makes my day hearing what some of you guys comment. And I love hearing about your guys' life. Anyway, I am rambling, but I love you guys so much. Okay, bye guys.